Game 4 of Euro 2024 sees Italy beating Albania 2-1 in a game that was quite entertaining in the first few minutes. Started off frantically, then, yeah, sort of just tailed off as the game went on. But very, very impressed by Italy. I love how they, they've already formed com combinations. Uh, chemistry is already up. They've only had the coach for just over just over a year. And you can sort of see patterns of play. And like it's, as you know, it's very difficult to build these patterns of play and stuff for a national side, right? Because everyone plays for their clubs. They go to their clubs. You meet every like two months for the international break and you only meet for like eight days. And you have to try and implement a style of play, right? So that's what also makes international football quite fascinating is that you have a bunch, you have all this bunch of players, very good players who, are, who have to come together and work as a team, even though they've not been together for a while, right? So quite impressed by Spalletti's job. And there's a very, very clear emphasis on using youth, right? Getting youth in. If you look at the squad, I think there's about four or five players who are above 30 years old. Uh, Di Lorenzo is 30, Jorginho is 32, uh, Matteo Damian is 34. And uh, who else? El Sharawi is 31. I don't think there's anyone else. So yeah, there's clear emphasis on youth and sprinkle some experience in there. Um, in the case of someone like Matteo Damian, these guys won the Euro in 2020, but they've, they made the World Cup. The last time they made the World Cup was in 2014, 10 years ago. Uh, for a team of Italy's caliber like that, that is that is insane. So this is just something that they're trying to do. They're trying to rebuild uh, by using the youth, right? Um yeah, if you if you watch Spalletti at Napoli, you know there are certain things that are are a must. Like in like you can't they're non negotiable in his teams. Uh, the high pressing, um, keeping pos uh, like having possession in the right areas of the field, right? So the final third or either side of the final third, like in the other opposition's half, um, also playing from the back and just not hoofing the ball up front, you know, like aimlessly then um, they really, really open the pitch up. So if you look at how wide the two wide players were, like they really try and open the pitch up so that they can create space for someone like Barella, who's a very good, who's a very good ball carrier, can run into space, and Jorginho, who can basically plays quarterback and can make those passes from midfield, right? So be it to Fratesi or to Chiesa on the wings, those are the non-negotiables for a coach like Spalletti. So those are, those are things that you will see in a team that is coached by him. Um, yeah, Albania. Albania said the game off quite well. 22 seconds in, Bajrami scored the first goal. That's the fastest goal ever scored in a Euros final. 22 seconds, that's a record. So keep that in mind. There might be a trivia coming soon. Um, and yeah, if you guys watch the game, you could see how emotional the Italians were, right? And I think that's how they started the game. They started with such a high tempo. And that sort of just led to... You can you can easily make a mistake from that, you know, like coming so hot that it's like, I just want to prove a point in the first like five minutes or to leave a mark, you know. And yeah, Bastoni's, I'm sorry, Di Marco's throw-in went straight to Bajrami, who also quite uh, had quite a bit of work to do to get uh, on on goal. And he did that quite well and then finished past Donnarumma. Donnarumma didn't have a chance there. But after that, it was all Italy, like, Italy just dominated. They were passing the ball around. They were moving in all sorts of directions. Jorginho staying in that quarterback position, spraying the ball all over the place. Chiesa attacking from the wing. Barella getting the ball from midfield and driving through space. Uh, Skamaka keeping the defenders occupied on that end. Like, Jim City and Ajeti, the two centre-backs for Albania, really had a tough time, right? So, they just imposed their will on them. But the one person for me who just was just the epitome of this calmness is Calafiori. Again, 22-year-old from Bologna. He formed a partnership with Lukumi, I believe his name was. I, I watched a few Bologna games, not too many. So I sort of remember him. He, you know, it's, it's easy for a really good player to stand out. But I never thought that he would actually be a consistent player in the Italian team, let alone start the first game of the tournament, you know. So, yeah, Calafiori is a baller. This partnership with Bastoni at the center of defense, they were so good today. Like, just so calm. Like, they just, they're calm on the ball. They're good in the air. Um, they can chase back. And if there's a break, you know, like, good one-on-one -on -one defenders, typical Italians. But then again, this is Albania, right? So we can only judge them 
by how they've played and what they had in front of them. There's going to be tougher tests to come. I would like to see how they hold up against better opposition. Their next game is against Spain, so there's, that's going to be a really, really big test. But for this game, they were really good. Di Marco as well made the mistake Ali gave the throw-in that went to Bajrami to score the goal. The rest of the game, he was impeccable, imperious. Like, the only place where he put his foot wrong, or I should say his hands wrong, right, because it was a throw-in, was that throw-in that he gave um, that he gave to Bajrami. Yeah, so Italy were just on their like they're just on their necks the entire the ne- for the next like ten minutes, and that led to a corner where there was like such interesting set piece play like running screens and stuff. If you've watched Arsenal, you know you've seen how we've been playing and scoring set from set pieces this year. I, I think it's the same with Brentford as well. It's almost like watching basketball plays, right? Like one person goes sets a screen, another person comes around, and like it's so beautiful to watch. Bastoni gets ahead of the far post. Um, almost straight at the keeper. Keeper doesn't really have a chance because the power was also just too much from the header. And yeah, that was the equalizer, making it 1-1. And Italy didn't let up. You know, once you get to 1-1, you're like, okay, so let's come down. Let's try and now build from here. Nah, they said we're coming at you. And Chiesa was just causing problems with that wing. He was just insane. Um, then the second goal came from Barella again. Very good first time finish. I don't know what Diwako was doing on that side of the field, but he somehow I, um Skamaka was trying to do a drag back. The ball went across the D, went to Dimarco. Um Dimarco just sort of touched it, which was just a a solid enough layoff to for Barella. And as the ball is bouncing half volley into the corner, making it two one. And yeah, from that point, Italy were just they were just on the front foot. It was they were unlucky not to get a third goal. Um Skamaka had two big chances. And yeah, one he just just led to a corner. Another one was the diving header after Kie- Kiesa's cross, and he couldn't manage to get that in the back of the net. So that's the one place where you feel like, okay, if these guys could have just like a proper finisher, or Skamaka could just up his game, right? Skamaka before he left off for West Ham was was solid. Like his confidence has just waned a bit, but Spalletti is showing belief in him, and I believe he can come good. He just needs to finish these chances because against the big sides, they're going to be. It's going to be the difference. It's going to be the small margin between um, victory and defeat. So, again, Skamaka just needs to get that sorted. Um, for Albania or defensively, they also really stifled Albania, right? So Albania didn't get a chance to really bring a Bro- Broha into the play. Into play, he was quite isolated up front. He was just. He was just there, like he wasn't really getting much of a, of um, of service, right? Um, yeah, second half a bit more of a calm affair. Italy had a few chances here and there, but couldn't really get the third goal. Um, Jorginho just kept playing as a quarterback, just spring those passes from midfield, like he really shown in that second half. One thing you could see is how well this team is drilled, uh, but the one weakness is just there's just moments where they just the passes are not getting to the player and stuff. But I think those are just things that come with chemistry. Yeah? Again, international football, most of these people don't have a chance to all train together over a period of time. So um, they have good structures so far. They have a very good foundation. It's just cleaning up some of those small things, right? Like building from the back, you can't c- have your pass short. You know, especially if you're building from the back, you've really spread open and you're, like, you're, your wingers are wide. You're, you're really wide. So if you lose the ball the opposition is attacking into space, you know? So, yeah, those are some of the things that they need to work on, but they have a very, very solid foundation. Defensive transition is also something that they do really well. Like, when they lose the ball, sprinting back (laughs) to make sure that they're not exposed. So, yeah, just a few things to build upon. Um, Manai came on. Um, There was a ball over the top that came for him, the Albanian striker. Uh, He just chested it well. And then he tapped it and he just went, just went across the face of goal. This was in the 90th minute. It would have been a smash and grab, but yeah, he couldn't, he didn't manage. Jonarum actually got a hand on it, but they didn't give a corner. They just said goal kick. And yeah, um, again, Italy just need to work on the small things. The the short, the passes that are not, that are coming up short, you know, they can lead to really crazy chances, especially when they play the likes of Spain, right? And they meet the likes of Yamal there in midfield. Uh, or rather, they get Fabian Ruiz and then he passes off to Yamal on the wing. Like, those are the things you just need to clean up. But all in all, good win, um, solid uh, challenge, I guess, because it was a challenge, going 1-0 down so early. 
they really responded well and yeah this team this team is for real and they actually might be my team for the euros because i've decided i'm going to decide I've decided. I'm going to decide. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I've decided. Maybe I don't know. But we'll see. I don't have a team. I'm still figuring it out. But anyway, that is our recap of Italy versus Albania and the last game of day two.